Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Ryan from Lion Bold Records. Thanks for watching this video today. When mixing, it's really all about the reverb and the delay. So I'm gonna click down here and you can see some automation. This is the automation of the echo on the voice. And so as you can see, in the beginning there is none, but I bring it in in certain places, especially on the three lines of the chorus. I bring in the echo and I even have them at different volumes, depending on how I feel and how I feel it needs to be in the mix. And then of course, towards the end over here, I bring in echo at a low volume and I raise it up almost like raising the fader on the echo to build intensity. And I will play that for you in just a moment. But the second ingredient is the reverb. And I have a track right here with reverb on it. As you can see, I have sends to both the reverb and the delay of course, there is no delay on the guitar. You could if you wanted to, but I just chose not to this time. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this track, but I'm only going to play the reverb. Let's take a listen. So these are the two reverb sends over here. And as you can see, the acoustic guitar has a little bit more and the voice has less because I want the voice to be more in front. So the way that reverb works is that the more reverb you have on an instrument, the further back in the mix it will feel. It's kind of like if you have a room that's super reverberant, like a glass or a concrete room, the voices that are way in the back, you're gonna have less of the direct audio because there's all that space in between the speaker and the listener. So because of all that distance, you're getting more reverberations from the room. So that's a, a good rule of thumb to remember. The more reverb, the more further back in the mix this will feel. So I want the vocals to be more up front than the acoustic guitar. So I set the reverb of the acoustic guitar a bit higher and the reverb level for the vocals a bit lower. So here is the reverb with the original tracks unmuted all mixed together here's the sound and i don't want to lose myself i don't want to give up hope. and i'm going to mute the reverb right now will my arms be strong enough will my legs hold me up and i'm going to bring it back in right now and i don't want to listen but a voice is telling me I need somewhere to belong till my feet can carry on. All right, that sounds way better. It gives it a space to be in. Uh, we'd never listen to music in a vacuum or an anechoic chamber. And sometimes if you close mic instruments, that's kind of what it feels like. So to make the instrument sound more natural, we got to put reverb on it. We have to put it in a room. Just a couple of tips before we move on from reverb, I wanna point out two things. There's the high cut and the pre-delay. Even if you don't understand reverb that much or your reverb plugin is a little bit confusing, I just wanna draw your attention to these two parameters because just these two alone will really help you shape your reverb. So I'm going to mute the raw tracks and I'm gonna play only the reverb again. The high cut really makes a difference of how present the reverb is, right? So with the high cut down like it is right now, it sounds almost like the reverb is coming from a different room, like you're in another room listening in from the outside. If I bring the high cut up, we hear more of that high frequency information. It gives us the impression that we're in the same room. With this setting, it might be a wooden room or maybe a room with drywall and furniture in it. So it's not that bright, but we still hear some of that high frequency information. Then raising it up all the way to full range, there's a lot of high frequency information. So we could be in a glass room or a room with a lot of windows or a concrete room where even the high frequencies 
are not muted, they're not absorbed, they're bouncing right off the walls, just like it would if we were actually in a real room. So I like setting that a little more on the mellow side because I don't want the S's and the other high frequency information from the voice to get in the way of the actual diction of the singer because we all want to understand what the singer is saying when they're singing in the song. Pre-delay, I never used to mess with, but I've realized now that it's one of the most important parts of reverb. In milliseconds, it tells you the timing from the original sound to when the reverb starts. And the cool thing about this reverb plugin is that you can even see in the blue image right here, when I turn the pre-delay up, you can see that there's a gap from the beginning of the sound to when the reverb starts. And this, this blue light is indicating the strength of the reverb. So it's a little visual of what you're expecting to hear. So I'm going to play just the vocals and we're gonna mess with a little pre-delay and take a listen. Would you trade a simple rhyme and lend a moment of your time? So that has a pretty small pre-delay and the reverb will enact quickly after the original sound. Now if I turn this up, you're gonna hear much more of a gap. Would you trade a simple rhyme and lend a moment of your time to help with all my messes? I've got a few questions. So that might sound a little bit extreme. Well, it is a little bit extreme for this song, but the idea is that in addition to the high cut, you can also change the perception of how large and what type of room you are in. So if the high cut changes the material of what the room is made out of, the pre-delay changes the size of the room. Because if you think about it, if you are in a small bedroom, there's not gonna be very much time between the original sound and the time it takes to bounce off the wall. Because it's only gonna be maybe like five feet away from your instrument if you're in a bedroom. But if you're in an amphitheater or a huge chamber or a cave, or wherever you record your music, the time it takes from you to strum your guitar and from it to hit the wall and then bounce back and make it back to your ears is gonna be much longer in comparison. So in this song, I set the pre-delay to maybe a medium, a short medium level to give it a feel that it's an intimate concert setting. It's a bigger room, but it's not as small as a bedroom. I wanna give a little bit of space there to make it feel a little bit bigger. Okay, last, but my favorite part is delay. And this is what I think you can also have the most fun with in your track. I have this stock delay plugin that's built right into Pro Tools. And right here, I brought up the delay automation, okay? So this is really straightforward. I'm gonna bring in some delay on parts of the song that I want to make more full. Because I only have two instruments, I have voice and guitar, I'm using the delay almost as a third instrument kind of in the way that a backup singer might echo or might double. That's what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna play a little bit and pay attention to the automation here because you will see, especially in this fader right here, the delay turning on and off. Think when you were hanging on that tree And I don't wanna lose myself I don't wanna give up hope And here it is. So uh, will my will my arms be strong enough? Will my legs hold me up? And bring it all back in. And I don't know where I'm going, but I know what I'm running from. Ooh, I need someone to lean on till my feet can carry on. So as you can see, I chose the specific parts of the song where I really wanted this delay to be in. Especially here in the end, I used the delay to make a stark contrast between this tender part right here where there is no delay, and then this epic part at the end where I ramp up the delay into an epic finish. So let's take a listen to that really quick. I don't wanna lose myself. I don't want to give up hope. Will my arms be strong enough? Will my legs hold me up? And I don't know where I'm going, but I know what I'm running from. Ooh, I need someone to lean on till my heart can carry. 
carry on All right, guys, that was pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comment section below and also hit that subscribe button for more future videos. I plan to release a ton more like this and your comments will help guide me and this channel into producing excellent content that you enjoy. So thanks so much for watching. Go check out some of my other videos on the channel and I'll see you guys later. Oh.